as Jody said, my name is Ian. I'm 24 years old, and I'm a recovering pill and heroin addict. I met Jody a few weeks ago at Hoag's Treatment Center because that's where my addiction took me, and thank God it did. Um, you know, for me, growing up, I always felt like I had a different perspective on the world than everyone else. I wanted to put the weight of the world on my shoulders, and I wanted to change it. Felt as if this capitalistic society in which we use resources so quickly wasn't right, and I had to do something about it. And so, as you can imagine, that brought on a lot of anxiety from an early age. Um, and, you know, I grew up in Orange County, not South Orange County, but Orange County nonetheless. Um, if any of you know where Villa Park High School is, the city of Orange. I grew up there and, you know, wealthy, upper middle class family. Um, but the man that raised me, who I called dad, uh, who was actually my stepfather, um, was an alcoholic and uh, was addicted to Xanax. And I went through my childhood, you know, chairs flying through windows, holes in walls, a screwdriver thrown by my head. And, uh, you know, I was left shaking and terrified at night in my bed. And I attribute a lot of the anxiety I have today on those experiences that I had when I was young. And, you know, so I went through elementary school and middle school really shy, really apprehensive to, you know, relate to other people because of what I had experienced. And then I reached high school and I discovered marijuana. And at first, smoking weed, I felt that ease and comfort that, you know, we all want to feel. And it was a way for me to fit in. And it quickly became, you know, once or twice a week to all day, every day throughout high school. And, you know, it alleviated my anxiety for, for several years. And I made it through high school just fine. And in fact, on paper, I looked like an incredible individual. But on the inside, I was consumed with fear and just didn't really know what to do. I was on student government, I played football, I was on homecoming court, I was in Mr. Villa Park, and I had a 4.6 GPA, but I smoked weed every single day. And after I'd say my junior year in high school, the weed wasn't really doing it for me anymore. And I was drinking on the weekends because I was always seeking the approval of other people. I wanted so badly to fit in, but never felt like I did. You know, I, I'm an egomaniac with an inferiority complex. That's the most simple way to put it. And so, you know, I graduated from high school with uh, high honors. I went on to UC Santa Barbara, and that's where my disease really progressed. Uh, I went through my freshman year, the weed wasn't really helping with the anxiety anymore, but I had to keep it around because if I didn't, if I let weed go, things would just, I felt as if they were going to tumble down. And so at 19, I went to one of the psychiatrists at UC Santa Barbara's Student Health, and uh, he gave me a prescription for Ativan, which uh, at one point in time switched to Clonopin. And for a couple years, you know, that did it for me. But what it didn't allow me to do was develop the coping skills that an individual needs to make it through daily life. My coping <laughs> mechanisms were take pills. That's no way to live your life. And again, I did well in school. And so on paper, I looked great and my parents didn't suspect anything. And I wasn't open with my, my parents or my family in general because I didn't want anyone to know how I really felt on the inside. And so the Ativan and the Clonopin continued. I took them as prescribed at first until I started to abuse them um, significantly. And then 
those stopped really working. I needed more than my prescription to feel okay in any situation that involved other people being around. And uh, I discovered a little trick in going to UCSB Student Health and smoking like six cigarettes before I went in and saying, oh, I have a terrible cough. I keep my roommate up at night. I can't sleep. Please help me. And they would give me a big old bottle of codeine promethazine syrup. And then I could get, I could go back in a couple weeks later to a different doctor, say the exact same thing, and get another bottle. And so I continued to take my pills, smoke my weed, drink, and then added the, the syrup on top of it. And then once again, I felt, I'm okay. But the reality of it, I was far from okay. And, you know, it, it really started to lead me to terrible, terrible situations. Several head injuries, alienating myself from my family. Um, the very beginning of my spring quarter of my senior year, I took uh, four milligrams of clonopin and drank all day long and ended up falling in my shower while my roommate was out of town. I split open my head on the bathtub. And the last thing I remember doing is getting up, putting an entire roll of paper towels on my head and sitting on my couch. What had actually transpired was I fell unconscious because of how much blood I had lost. My bathroom looked like a murder scene. And by the grace of God, my light was on, my door was unlocked for some reason, and a good friend of mine decided to just stop in at 2.30 in the morning. And he found me on my couch in a three-foot puddle of my blood. And I must have been out cold for about 30 minutes at that point. Fortunately, he was able to wake me up, and I got the medical attention that I needed, and I was able to you know, get through that last quarter of uh, my senior year and I graduated but had he not come at 2 30 a.m. had the light not been on to kind of spark his attention and had the door not been unlocked I probably wouldn't be here today and still that wasn't enough to get me to stop my disease had progressed so quickly at that point that it wasn't a wake-up call at all I was like oh sweet I made it through. I'm still alive. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And so I graduated from UC Santa Barbara with a dual degree in psychology and philosophy with an emphasis in ethics and public policy. And uh, I aspired to go to law school. And uh, I took a year off in between college and law school to work at a law firm. But almost immediately upon moving home, I discovered Oxycontin. I had several friends that were able to get their hands on hundreds and hundreds of them because doctors simply just prescribe far too much of it. And it began with smoking the Oxycontin every single day. It didn't go quick it didn't go nearly as slow in the progression as marijuana or the benzos did. It was only a matter of weeks before the first time I used and to where I was using every single day. And I got a brief reprieve from, from using for about three months prior to starting law school. But all I did was take away the substances. I didn't change anything about myself. And I was still left with absolutely no coping mechanisms whatsoever. So as soon as the grind of law school was on and the stress was high, I went back to the only thing I knew how to do, and that was use. And because I was in school and I was low on funds, I couldn't afford Oxycontin anymore, so I moved on to heroin. And I was smoking heroin up to a gram a day at one point in time and taking Adderall to offset the sleepiness 
and uh, lack of motivation that the opiates brought on. And for a while, I did just fine. Again, I was fine on paper, but in reality, I was not. I won the Witkin Award, actually, which is uh, getting the best grade out of anyone in my school in torts, high on heroin in Adderall. And so that, for me, justified my use completely. Oh, I do better in school high. It's nonsense. I, uh, I continue to use, and, you know, I probably could have stopped some point during the beginning of my first year of law school, but I didn't want to. And just like the, uh, the young lady in the video says, you know, when you, want, when you can stop, you don't want to, and when you want to stop, you can't. Those words are 100% true, at least in my life. And I continued on in my first year of law school, smoking more and more heroin, using oxys when I had enough money to do so. And eventually it got to the point where I was walking out of law school classes and puking in the bathroom because I was so dope sick. I wasn't, I was missing classes. I had to drop my property class because I couldn't get out of bed for three days because I didn't have any money and I didn't have any dope or pills and I couldn't move. And at that point in time, I hated myself. I was completely apart from my family who lived in the same home as I did. I never spoke to any of them. They lost all trust for me because I stole from my parents. I stole from my sister who has always said, you're my idol. And my addiction was so strong that I still stole from that kid that thinks that highly of me. And it breaks my heart today to say that, but it's the truth. And that's exactly where this disease can lead you. And, you know, at the end of my, my first year of law school, I finally was like, I can't do this anymore. I was literally emotionally and spiritually bankrupt. I was a shell of who I was. I had my, lost my personality, and I had literally lost the will to live life. I didn't want to get out of bed. And at the end of my using, I finally got to the point where after enough days spent in bed, enough days throwing up, enough days alienating myself from everyone I knew, and completely hating myself and who I had become, I finally cried out for help. And my parents, you know, were supportive enough and loving enough to put me in the Hoag's treatment program. And that treatment program saved my life. Because, I mean, I got out of that one instance in which I fell and hit my head, and my buddy found me, but how many more of those do I have? Probably mm -hmm. none, if any. And I don't want to live that way anymore, and I don't wish that way of life on any of you. So, you know, all I can say is I hope that my message affected you in some way or another. And you can get some hope from what I've said today. But uh, thank you for letting me be here.